worry so much more about trying something that doesn't work than they worry about not trying something that would have worked if only they had the guts to do it. My goal is that I can help my audience walk away with a real sense of confidence that they can set about the business of making positive, meaningful, long-lasting change in tough, demanding, fast-moving times. We started Fast Company more than 20 years ago now from a sense that business leadership, competition, was at a moment of true reimagination. In an era of hyper-competition and non-stop disruption, the only way to stand out from the crowd is to stand for something special. When I get before an audience, I try to be both provocative and positive. I do want to kind of shake folks up in a good way with a set of ideas that encourage them to think really differently about the industry they're in, the company they're part of, the work they do. Do you have a definition of success for your company that allows you to stand for something special and inspires others to stand with you? The favorite thing I do was to tell a set of, I hope, really colorful, really entertaining stories that come by virtue of me in the course of writing my books, really immersing myself in all kinds of organizations from all kinds of fields. And so I want to actually kind of bring my audience to these organizations and allow them to see for themselves through storytelling what these ideas and what these techniques look like. Megabus, it turns out, really has reinvented and recast the very experience of riding in a bus. How'd they do it? That's more than anything else what I want to do is instill in my audience a sense of confidence by showing them organizations kind of like their own that are actually making change, doing innovation, unleashing value very successfully. This great heartland manufacturing company in Cleveland, Ohio called Lincoln Electric. I'm convinced that it does so well in the marketplace because it thinks so progressively about what it's building in the workplace. The animating spirit of my new book, Simply Brilliant, is that you don't have to be part of Silicon Valley or Seattle, Washington or Kendall Square and the biotech scene in Boston to unleash innovation. Sometimes you can make the most extraordinary progress in industries that have been a little too ordinary for a little too long. I didn't write about Google or Facebook or Tesla. I set my material in retail banks, insurance companies, department stores, fast food joints, heck, even a parking garage. Great to see you, Bill. Thanks so much for joining us. My great pleasure Congrats to be here. Congrats on the book. It Thank looks so great. Much. The parking garage, though, if you look at it, see it's open, but there, there's actually a store there, and there's one of the hottest restaurants <laughs> it's actually in, in, part, in part of the parking there's garage. There's a store in a glass cube on the fifth floor of the parking garage. The, you know, the old theory is you, you cram as many cars in, then you get the heck out of there. The new theory is let's make it a wide open space. There are yoga classes in the morning. People literally get married on the top floor I Victoria's that. Secrets that of fashion. So it's become a civic space and a cultural space rather than just a bland. It's again, extraordinary, something extraordinary in a pretty ordinary yeah, field. Yeah, it is. What I try to do is to create both a manifesto for change, a set of ideas to help people understand the world, and a manual for achieving it, a set of practices, a set of techniques that allow people who want to make change to really bring it to life. There is, to me, something powerful about admitting, I love to learn, I need to learn, we've got to be curious. Well, that means you're going to fail, you're going to fail a lot, you're going to feel kind of sick to your stomach, a little uncomfortable when you try to master things you don't know anything about, that's what it's going to take. I mean, ultimately, the job of this group is not to out-muscle or out-hustle everybody else. It's to out-think everybody else. The goal today, the true definition of success, is not to try to be the best at what lots of other people are already doing. It's to be the only one who does 
what you do. Ask yourselves, what are the small number of ideas that really define how we do business and that distinguish us from how everybody else in our field does business? Today is a really exciting time to be a leader, although to be honest, it can be a really daunting time to be a leader as well. The work of making deep-seated, meaningful change, building on all your past success, even as you build out a whole new point of view about the future, really has become the defining work of our time. That's what it means to be a leader today. I spent the last 25 years, first as a young editor at the Harvard Business Review, then as the co-founder of Fast Company, now as someone who travels the world, research and writing books, interacting with and learning from really some of the most extraordinary leaders in the world. What you don't see, and this is true of every organization that can pull off these transformations, what you don't see is the hidden history at this company. All the stuff we tried that didn't work. All the experiments we conducted that failed. And maybe they failed so badly we didn't learn anything, but by and large they, they tend to fail in ways that you learn an awful lot. But the only way that you get to all that is if organizationally and individually you understand that there is no learning without failing. Your strategy ultimately is nothing more than the outward expression of your culture. Your culture is the only thing that can sustain your strategy through the ups and downs and the turmoil of the business environment, new technologies, new competitors. The most successful companies genuinely do care more than everybody else about customers, about colleagues, about how the whole organization conducts itself in a world with so many opportunities every single day to cut corners and compromise on value. The real promise of entrepreneurship today is that you and your colleagues can be more memorable than anybody else. You can create experiences, products, brands that are truly memorable to encounter. And that's what's gonna separate you from the giants in your field. Playing it safe may be the riskiest course of all. Change begins to happen when people finally conclude that the risk of trying something new is less than the cost of clinging to what's worked 